Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a look at another budget tablet from a company called TJD. It's our first time taking a look at one of their products, but they do make a lot of tablets, usually selling for under 200 bucks, and this one here is actually around $100 that also has an integrated kickstand, a little bit reminiscent of a Surface. Comes in a few colors, including this blue version that has front-facing stereo speakers, and otherwise the specs are pretty entry-level. Does have a quad-core processor from MediaTek along with 2 gigabytes of RAM, so pretty entry-level again, and that's why it's running on Android 10 Go Edition, which is slightly more lightweight. 32 gigs of built-in storage, and then the typical uh, built-in Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. Rear-facing camera is 5 megapixels, and then 2 megapixels for the webcam for video chatting. It is using a USB Type-C port for charging, which is excellent, and it has a 6,000 milliamp hour capacity, which is rated to last around 5 hours of streaming back video. Despite the low price, they even give you a folio case as part of the accessories in the box. So speaking of, we have the quick user guide along with a USB Type-C charging and syncing cable. There's a wall adapter and here is the free case that they give you. So again, it's a folio style that has kind of a lock. It's translucent on the inside along with the company's logo imprinted on it. It's actually not a bad quality case. All right, so some first impressions looking at the design of the tablet here is actually it looks more expensive than the price would imply. And that is because of the color scheme in this blue version. It reminds me a lot of the next bit robin and even maybe some of the pixel phones and it is quite slim as well the frame of the tablet on the edges are made out of plastic however the uh, back of the tablet here is actually made out of aluminum metal along with the kickstand is also made out of metal so surprisingly for the price it doesn't feel too cheap either it's actually cold to the touch otherwise on the rear here we do have the aforementioned 5 megapixel camera and in terms of ports we do have a power key and a volume rocker on the top and then on the edge here we also have a flap that is covering up the micro SD card slot for expanding the memory. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, great to see, along with a standard USB Type-C port. Now this kickstand, again, which is made out of metal, has a very adjustable nature to it, so it's kind of reminiscent of the Surface because you're able to prop it up at virtually any angle and it will just stop at any point because it's very stiff. So for example, you can set it onto a tabletop like this. As long as you have it on a flat surface, it will stand upright without any problems, holding the weight of the tablet pretty firmly. And you can also continue to flex the stand back all the way down to this particular angle. Of course, you can also pop it upright at a more vertical angle, depending on the height of your table. And then here's what it looks like inside of the folio case. It's surprisingly lightweight and actually feels very solidly put together. And there are still cutouts, so you can still use the kickstand when in the case. And it fits overall really without any problems, working just fine. Now the glass that's covering up the display is also very solid and tempered, so it feels as good as something that Corning would make, for example. It feels nice when you're swiping along. The only thing that's maybe missing would be a fingerprint resistant layer on top of it because I did find the screen to be pretty easy to get smudged up so you have to kind of wipe it down after a while but it does feel quite sensitive and the display is actually surprisingly good for a $100 tablet especially something that has HD resolution. I was expecting it to be quite subpar but actually uh, colors do look quite nice and vibrant pretty good adjustable range and even the viewing angles are not shabby at all. You can see how I can look at it from extreme angles and colors don't really wash out. It does come with all of the essentials like Google applications but these are mostly Go edition of the apps which take up less space and require less animations to run. So for example to give you Google Go edition and what that means, if you aren't familiar, is on regular Android, there would be the Discover tab just right from the home screen. On here, it's on a separate page within the Google app, so you have to first tap to confirm that you actually want to see this news before they will load it. So it saves a bit on the processing power because if you don't really need to see this information, it's not going to always be updating it in the background. Um, and as a result, it's also using up less data as well, as well as have some quick shortcuts to some mobile versions of sites, and it's all laid out in a pretty easy to use fashion and again overall fluidity is not bad when it comes to generally navigating around and figuring things out. If we jump into the settings very quickly we can also see that out of the 32 gigs of built-in storage about 20% is used by the operating system out of the box leaving you with around 25 gigs to install your favorite games and applications with. And under about tablet we can also confirm that indeed it is running on Android 10.0 as we can see here. The keyboard here is just the stock 
Dock Gboard that we can use to quickly type things out actually feels pretty responsive when it comes to swiping and tapping along without really any problems. We can actually search up something like navigation if we wanted to and take a quick look at that. Uh, so again, right now we have two button navigation. We can also switch over to gesture completely. Now let's try taking a quick peek at the speaker quality by watching back a video on YouTube. And the Wi-Fi reception quality overall is quite solid. Right now we have around three bars, although we are a little bit further away from the router, but everything here is loading back actually quite quickly just by tapping along, as you can see there despite having just two gigabytes of RAM and a relatively entry level processor. But the YouTube app still feels smooth when it comes to scrolling. We can also watch videos up to 1080p, as you can see there. Although technically the max res that you'll get the utility out of is around 720. Overall though, definitely not bad for what it is. And let's try scrubbing into a different portion of the video. And turning down the volume there. Overall takeaway is the speaker quality is above average for a budget tablet. There is in fact good stereo separation and it doesn't sound too tinny either even at higher volumes. It doesn't have the most bass, sure, but it doesn't distort either and actually sounds quite clean for watching back some quick videos, even listening to some music. Not shabby. You can also of course use standard headphones or Bluetooth to further improve the quality and the screen. Again, colors at least do look really good. It might not be pin sharp in terms of resolution, but it's not going to be something that really gets in the way of you enjoying the media content either. Jumping into the web browser next and see how it fares. It's going to be opening up the desktop version of sites, which can be a little bit complex. It's trying to open up their own uh, company site here by default, TJD. So it seems like they do make quite a lot of computers as well as tablets. Uh, so they aren't new at this game. They've been around for a while. It's just our first time taking a look at one of their products, or maybe one of the first times they've started to expand into North America, at least. This is a company based in China. Um, otherwise, we can also try out some other website tabs, and let's try loading back a site like The Verge and see how that does. Overall, The Verge is a pretty complex site, so it might take a little longer to open up compared to more powerful devices, say running on Snapdragon chipsets. Uh, but again, for the price, you're paying just $100, that's going to be uh, easily you know, four or five times cheaper than an iPad, for example. You have to expect that the performance will also be scaled down, and it's not performing five times worse either. It's actually loading up the page faster than I expected. It's a little bit jumpy at certain moments, but certainly not bad. The screen still feels responsive. Other details here will take a little bit longer to fully render as expected, but again, this page has lots of videos and small ads and details, so handling itself not too poorly and pinch to zoom still feels overall responsive enough as well, and scrolling doesn't feel too choppy either. So two gigabytes of RAM, although it's not the most in the world, it will still allow you to open up three or four tabs in the browser if you don't have anything else in the background that you're running, and it can still juggle between these basically these pages if you go back and forth between them and they won't really reload or re-render. Uh, but if you are doing much more tabs or more multitasking, it will definitely start to struggle a bit more. In terms of the camera performance, it's not going to be very strong as expected for just a 5 megapixel sensor, but you do have autofocus at the very least. And, you know, tablet cameras in general, I don't expect the best performance out of. As long as it can snap something like a document when you need to use it in a pinch, it still suffices. Take a quick look at the gaming experience next. It's really where the budget price would show the most, I think, because of the relatively entry-level hardware coupled with the less RAM. You aren't really able to run demanding games on here. Uh, so even though you can still technically install in terms of the built-in memory, something like PUBG or Asphalt, you're not going to get a very good experience because there'll be just a lot more choppiness going on. Um, so I would really recommend just lighter titles, things like Crossy Road, but anything that gets too demanding, you'll start to see more choppiness and uh, dropped frames as well. So over here we can see that 
uh, again, as a whole, not doing too bad. The tablet, for the most part, doesn't thermal throttle or even get too hot or warm as you're holding it, so it remains pretty cool in temperature. Uh, but again, just keep these general expectations in mind. It's not going to work the best for super demanding games. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this 10.1 inch Android budget tablet from TJD. And as a whole, it's actually doing better than I was honestly expecting uh, when looking at the specs alone. And it does have a metal rear along with a metal kickstand that is quite versatile and useful for propping up to watch videos when on the go. And otherwise, basic tasks like web browsing also do work quite well with games gaming being perhaps one of its weaknesses, but aside from that, it offers a pretty good value actually for the price, and we're definitely eager to check out some more of this company's devices and see how they stack up in the future. Uh, so you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. A very interesting design, I guess, more than anything with that kickstand and that interesting color scheme. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the TJD 10-inch budget Android tablet.